Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 7.2, Multiply Fractions and Whole Numbers. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use a model to show the product of a fraction and a whole number? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbook to lesson 7.2, found on page 147, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number two. For question two, the problem is 3 times the fraction 3 fourths. Now, what that means is we're finding three groups of the fractional part, and the fractional part is 3 fourths. Now, when you find groups of a fractional part, you're going to use fraction circles to help you model and solve the problem. So what we have here is this. Based on the whole number 3, we've drawn 1, 2, 3 circles. Now, I need to identify my denominator in the fraction, and that denominator is a 4. So we've now divided those three circles into four equal parts. So one, two, three, four equal parts. Now I'm going to look at my numerator of my fraction, and that numerator is a three. So what happens next is we need to shade in one, two, three of those four equal parts. Now what I have here is this, and we're going to go ahead and write this down. For each one of these circles that is modeled and shaded for us, what I know is this. Once again, there's one, two, three out of four parts that are shaded in. So that means I have three-fourths being modeled here, I have three-fourths being modeled here, and three-fourths being modeled here. Now, if I were to add those together, here's what I know. Three plus three is six, and six plus three is gonna give us nine. So that tells me that I would end up with a fraction of nine and remember, your denominator stays the same, so it would be 9 fourths. So what that also tells me is this. I know that 3 times 3 fourths is going to be 9 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 9 fourths. Now I need to make sure that my fraction is in its simplest form. So I can't leave my fraction as an improper fraction. What I know is 4 goes into 9 two whole times. So I'm going to go ahead and write a 2 down. Now, 4 times 2 is 8, so I know that I'm left with 1 remaining. And remember, your denominator always stays the same. So 9 fourths has now become in its simplified form 2 and 1 fourths. And we now have the answer to our problem. Now, let's take a look at question number 4. For question 4, they give us 7 times 2 thirds. So what that means is, once again, we're finding groups of a fractional part. We're finding seven groups of our fractional part, which is two-thirds. Now remember, when you're finding groups of a fractional part, you're going to use fraction circles to model. So my first step is going to be this. My whole number is seven, so that means I'm going to go ahead and draw seven circles. So we're going to go ahead and begin to draw. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we now have seven circles. Now our next step is to look at our fraction again. And what I know is the denominator is a three. So that means I have to divide each of my seven circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles, into three equal parts. So we're gonna go ahead and divide those circles into three equal parts. So go ahead and draw with me. Three equal parts in each of our seven circles. So there's five, six, seven circles that now have three equal parts. Now, I now need to look at my numerator, which is a two. And what that two says is, now we're gonna shade in two of those three equal parts. So we're gonna go ahead and shade in two of our three, three equal parts in each one of our circles. So there's one, two, one and two, one and two, one, two, and then one and two. So once again, we've shaded in two of our three equal parts. Now we need to make a count to see how many are shaded all together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen parts that are shaded in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make that fourteen my numerator. So I'm going to write down the fourteen. Now remember, we've divided our circles into three equal parts. So we're going to make that 14 over 3. 
Now remember once again, we have to make sure that our answer is in its simplest form. And if I have the fraction 14 thirds, that's an improper fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to simplify. What I know is 3 goes into 14 a total of 4 times. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 4 down as my whole number. Now remember, 4 times 3 is 12. So what I end up with is I have 2 that are left over. So that 2 is going to become my numerator and my denominator will remain a 3. So I'm going to write that 3 down as my denominator. So what I know is 7 times 2 thirds gives me 4 and 2 thirds is my answer. Now let's take a look at question number 5. For question 5 they give us 3 eighths times 4. Now this time we're finding a fractional part which is 3 eighths of a group and that group is 4. Now in order to find a fractional part of a group we need to use fraction strips to help us model. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to place four whole fraction strips side by side to represent the four. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw and I want you to draw with me. So we have one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go ahead and write down the one hole in each one of those. So we have our four holes to represent the four in the problem. Now I'm going to look back in my problem, what I notice is this. I notice that my denominator is an 8. So what that tells me is I need to find 8 equal size fraction strips that will fit exactly under my 4 holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw and here's what I know. Let's go ahead and draw. We're going to go ahead and set our boxes up again just like we have right underneath. And I want you guys to draw with me. Now if I divide each one of those boxes in half, if I just cut it in half, Let's make a count and see what we have. We now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 equal size fraction strips and now fit underneath each one of our 1, 2, 3, 4 holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and identify those as 1 half pieces. Because when you divide one hole in two, you end up with 1 half. So we now have our equal size fraction strips to fit exactly under our four holes. Now our next step is to go back to our fraction and look at the numerator. Well I know that my numerator is a 3, so what that means is I'm now going to circle 3 of those 1 half pieces. So here's 1, 2, 3. So once again that's 1, 2, 3 of those halves. So what that tells me is my answer turns out to be 3 halves or 3 over 2. Now the problem is I can't leave once again my fraction as an improper fraction but what I know is this 2 goes into 3 one whole time so I'm going to go ahead and write down the whole number 1. I'm left with 1 remaining so that 1 becomes my numerator and once again my denominator stays the same it stays a 2. So I end up with 1 and 1 half as the product of 3 eighths times 4 and we now have our answer. Now let's take a look at question number 8. For question 8 the problem is 9 times 2 thirds. Well now we're back to finding groups of a fractional part. I'm going to find 9 groups of the fractional part which is 2 thirds. Now remember when you find groups of a fractional part we're going to use those fraction circles to help us model. So what I know is this. My whole number is 9 which means I need to now draw 9 of my circles. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw 9 circles and I want you to draw with me. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 circles. Now that we have our 9 circles drawn, we're going to go back to our fraction part. And what we know is this. The denominator is a 3. So that means I now need to divide each one of my 9 circles into 3 parts. So let's go ahead and divide those circles into 3 parts. So here's 1. Here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and now 9 of our circles divided into 1, 2, 3 parts. Now our next step is going to be this. We're going back to the fraction here's what we know. The numerator is a 2. So what that tells me is I now need to shade in 2 of my 3 parts for each of my circles. 
So I'm going to have you go ahead and pause your video and I'm going to have you go ahead and shade in two of those three parts in each one of your circles. Now, hopefully your models look very similar to what mine do. So what we're going to do next is this. We're going to go back to our fraction or our fraction circles and we're going to go ahead and count how many total pieces have been shaded in. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 pieces that are shaded in. So that 18 now becomes our numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 18. And remember, we divided our circles into 1, 2, 3 equal parts. So that 3 is our denominator. Now, once again, we have to make sure that our answer is in its simplest form. And right now, 18 thirds or 18 over 3 is an improper fraction. So I check and see, how many times can a 3 go into an 18? Well, 3 goes into 18 6 whole times, and there's no remainder left over. So what that means is, the whole number 6 is the product for our problem. Now, let's take a look at question number 9. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, Jody has a 5-pound bag of potatoes. She uses 4 fifths of the bag to make potato salad. How many pounds of potatoes does Jody use for the potato salad? So what we know is this. Jody has a 5-pound bag of potatoes. She uses four-fifths of the bag to make potato salad. So how many pounds of potatoes does Jody use for the potato salad? So what that means is this. We're going to have to take, and our problem becomes, four-fifths fractional part of the five-pound bag of potatoes. So four-fifths of five, and remember, that little word of just represents multiplication. Now, when we find fractional part of a group, we're going to use fraction strips to help us model instead of our circles. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to look at my whole number in this problem, which is a 5, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw 5 holes to represent that number. Let's go ahead and begin to draw, and I want you to draw with me. Here's 1, here's 2, here's 3, here's 4, and here's 5 holes. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 holes to represent the 5 in our problem. Now my next step is to go back to the fraction and look at the denominator. Well, my denominator here is also a 5. So what I have to find is, I have to find equal size pieces that will fit exactly under my 5 holes. So I need 5 equal size pieces fitting under my 5 holes. Well, if you'll take a look, we're going to go ahead and start to draw. I'm just going to draw my boxes again. So there's 1 right underneath, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4, and there's 5. Now remember, my denominator here is also a 5. So if I make a count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I now have the right fraction pieces that I need. So what I know is 5 holes fit exactly underneath the 5 holes that were part of our problem here to represent the 5 pounds. Now I'm going to go back to my fraction. I'm going to look at now the numerator, which is a 4. And what I need to do is I now need to circle 1, 2, 3, 4 out of those 5 pieces. So we're going to go ahead and begin to circle, and here's 1, 2, 3, 4 of those pieces. And so what that tells me is, it tells me that 4 fifths times the whole number 5 is going to equal 1, 2, 3, 4 holes. So my answer to this problem becomes, we're going to need 4 pounds of potatoes. Now let's take a look at question number 10. For number 10 it says Lucas lives 5 eighths miles from school. Kenny lives twice as far as Lucas from school. How many miles does Kenny live from school? So what we know is this. Lucas lives 5 eighths mile from school. Kenny lives twice as far. Now remember, when you see that phrase twice, it means you're multiplying by 2. Now what I know is this. We're going to take our problem, and it now becomes 2 times our fractional part, which is 5 eighths. So what we're doing is we're finding groups. So we're finding two groups of a fractional part, which is 5 eighths. Now, since we're finding groups of a fractional part, we're going to use fraction circles to help us model that problem. Now, my whole number is a 2. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to draw two circles. So here's one. Go ahead and draw with me. One, two circles. Now, let's go back and look at our fraction, which is 5 eighths. What I notice is my denominator is an 8. 
So I'm going to go ahead and divide each one of those fractions into eight equal parts. So let's go ahead and divide our fractions into eight equal parts. So go ahead and draw with me. So there's one, and then there's our second fraction divided into eight equal parts. Now I'm going to go back to my fraction once again, and this time I'm going to look at my numerator. That numerator is a five. So what that tells me is I now need to shade in five, so one, two, three, four, five of those parts. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask you to pause your video and I want you to go ahead and shade in five of those equal parts with me, okay? So go ahead and pause now and do your shading. Now, your model should look similar to mine and what we know is this. We now have one, two, three, four, five of our eight equal parts shaded in. So we're going to go ahead and make a count to see how many total parts we have shaded. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what happens is that 10 becomes my numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 10 down. And remember, we divided each of our circles into 8 equal parts. So that 8 becomes our denominator. Now, once again, we have to make sure that our answer is in its simplest form. Right now, we have an improper fraction. It's 10 eighths. But what I know is 8 goes into 10 one whole time. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the whole number 1. And remember, 8 goes into 10 one time, and that's with 2 left over. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 2 my numerator. Now once again, your denominator stays the same. So it's going to be 1 and 2 eighths. Now the thing is, I have a 2 and an 8, which means I can still simplify further. I can divide both of those numbers by 2, and when I do that, I end up with still the whole number 1, but I know that 2 divided by 2 is going to give me a 1, so my numerator is now 1, and I know that 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4, so my denominator is now a 4. So when I multiply 2 times 5 eighths, my answer turns out to be 1 and 1 fourth in its simplest form. Now, as your homework for tonight, I would like you guys to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 148. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Once again, don't forget, your homework assignment for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 148. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.